What's going on, Washington Commanders Nation? It's your boy Rio Robinson back with the latest and greatest on the Rambling with Rio YouTube channel where we ramble about the Washington Commanders. Today is Tuesday, March 5th, and we've reached a landmark part of the offseason. The NFL Draft Scouting Combine is now in the books. It is finito, and we are seven days away from the start of the NFL free agent tampering period. So we're getting that much closer to the 2024 NFL draft, a draft in which Washington will be setting the blueprint for the build and recalibration of Washington football going forward. The team still has a fresh name. The stadium has a new name, new GM, new ownership, new head coach, and Washington is looking to come away with its first legitimate franchise quarterback in quite some time, and it's going to be a conversation that does not stop here throughout the draft process. During Combine Week, I spent all weekend scouring every media availability Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May had, and J.J. McCarthy. I wanted to watch every single mic that was put in their face. I don't care if it was a short scrum. I don't care if it was some fun little eating trolley gummy worms section on NFL Network. I don't care if it was with Chris Sims and them on NBC, with Ryan Wilson and Rick Spillman on CBS. I have put in so much watch time on the top three quarterbacks in this NFL draft. I'm positive Washington is drafting one, and I was impressed by all of those guys at the microphone over the weekend. They all said the right things. They all have different personalities. Drake May talks fast as hell. Jaden Daniels is more reserved. And Caleb is just his own guy. He marches to the beat of his own drum. And they tried to press him. They tried to get him to talk crazy a little bit. And he kept his composure. He answered his questions as honestly as he could. And he kept it pushing. None of them threw at the combine. I have no problem with such. I see some people saying, oh, they don't want to compete. The top couple guys don't need to be nitpicked and prodded about throws they made to strangers at the NFL draft combine, especially when we already know how the top three of this draft stacks up. I see no value in them throwing at the combine. That doesn't worry me. Caleb Williams not doing his medicals at the combine and saving them for only the teams he interviews with and does top 30 visits does not bother me. Something that slightly bothers me, Jaden Daniels not stepping on the scale. Why are we not stepping on the scale, my guy? Everybody there stepped on the scale. Everybody gave height and weight. Even Marvin Harrison Jr. gave his height and weight. Didn't even speak to the We got nothing out of Marvin Harrison at the scouting combine of 2024. But I needed to watch every single second of what these quarterbacks was talking about. And I scoured the internet for every clip I could find because I am so thirsty for everything quarterback. I will be watching all three of their pro days with popcorn in hand, excited as hell because ain't nothing more excited than draft season when you got a quarterback on the way. I mean, you got the second pick of the draft and a quarterback on the way. Nothing beats the excitement and anticipation of that, especially when you finally feel like your franchise is in a position to make the right pick at said position. But going into this mock draft, this isn't my 3.0. This is just my post-scouting combine Washington Commanders mock draft. I wanted to switch the format up a little bit since it's not going to be a mainline mock draft Monday numbered mock draft. I'm going to do a couple more of those before the draft coming up on April 25th. But Caleb rescheduled his top 30 visit with the Chicago Bears. He was scheduled to meet with them today. He now pushed it back to after his pro day coming up the last week of March. Chicago trying to get a top 30 interview in this fast is a little strange as well because those usually don't start till around the end of March, early April. They was trying to get Caleb in that building early, get the medicals, get everything out the way, get a better feel for their guy. Caleb said a little bit too much dip on your chip. I will see y'all at the end of the month after I do my pro day. Is it posturing? Is he politicking, trying to work his way to another location? Probably not, but we don't know. But going into this mock, I've done two so far. My first one, I had Drake May at two. My second one, I had Jaden Daniels at two. So for starters, 
I'm going to do what I think Washington is going to do. I'm going to send an offer to Chicago for the second overall, for the first overall pick in the rights of drafting DC's own Caleb Williams here for the commanders. They're probably going to decline it, which is probably going to happen in real life. I don't expect Chicago to move off that pick, but I'm crossing my fingers and I'm hoping we're going to see what type of shit shake if I come correct with an offer for the first pick to move up one spot so they can still draft a quarterback at two. How much do they like Caleb? How much are they fine with the fact that Caleb does not love them, the outfit or the situation? You know, his tone just changed when asked about Washington compared to talking about Chicago. But that is the game plan. I watched so much of the draft combine, the two positions that stand out wholeheartedly above the rest, wide receiver and offensive line. They said, if you need an offensive lineman, you are in heaven because this may be the best offensive line class in the last 20 years. In the last 20 years. So for those saying, we got to take Alt or Fashanu at two. No, we don't. This is the most deep offensive line class in two decades. We're going to be able to fill the line no matter what we do with the first pick in the draft. So here's the either or of how I'm going to go about this mock draft for the post-combine mock. I'm going to shoot an offer to Chicago for Caleb. If they decline it, the pivot will be. I am picking twice in the first round, meaning I'm going to take the quarterback I think Washington's going to select at number two, and then we're going to try to get back up in the 20s to go get us a dog-ass offensive lineman to protect the investment we just took with the second pick of the draft. But that's enough rambling. That's enough with the pleasantries. Let's get to it. Let's get to what y'all came here to see. Mock draft scouting combine post scouting combine edition let's shoot us an offer over to chicago and see what they talking about let me be honest of what i think is appropriate for this while i think there will be a caleb tax applied even though it's one spot i'm not gonna go too crazy to move up one spot but i'm gonna at least shoot my shot because caleb's my guy i think he's demonstrably better than every quarterback in the draft. And if you've heard anything they were saying out of Indy, everyone expects it. Everyone talked about how much he loves ball, his passion for the game, and how he's just clear cut, head and shoulders above every quarterback in the class. So I'm at least shoot. I'm at least shoot because that's how I live my life. The worst somebody's going to tell you is no. Always shoot your shots in all things. Always shoot your shot. I teach my kids the same thing. Whatever you want in life, go for it. Worst they can tell you is no. And at that point, you pivot, you move forward, and you figure out how to move from there. But let's go try to get the first pick of the draft and see if we can get Caleb here in D.C. We're going to give him our second overall pick. This is the kicker right here. If I add our 2025 first-round pick, they better say yes because I'm not going – I'm not going any farther than, let's call it, a third this year, a third in 2025, and a first in 2025. So to move back one spot, you picked up a third-round pick, our first next year. So two-thirds and two-firsts to move up one spot to draft Caleb Williams. People will say that's not enough. That looks like more than enough to me. I'm sorry, nigga. That's one spot in the draft. I understand the draft value chart, how all that works. But to go from one to two and to pick up two thirds and two firsts, come on, man. Especially if this guy's telling you behind closed doors, I don't know about your franchise. I'm unsure of the succession plan here, and y'all might be some lame duck ass guys over here. Y'all might be a lame duck GM and coaching staff. I'm not trying to play for a whole new regime in year two. There's instability from the ownership side, and it's one of the cheapest, non-highest paid owners in the league. So there are questions that Caleb, Caleb could try to silently tank this shit for Chicago and say, look, we can move like no one needs to be embarrassed and you could just trade back or you could let everybody know. I told you I don't want to play for y'all. But in this hypothetical, 
Washington is going to send the number two pick this year, our first rounder next year, our third at pick 67 this year, and our third next year. That's as much as I'm offering because I feel like that is more than fair. Shit, if we want to really sweeten it, throw in a fifth next year too. So first, third, and fifth in 2025, first and third this year, propose the trade. Oh, the offer was rejected. This is how I expect the draft to go. I expect Washington and a plethora of other teams to shoot their shot with Chicago and inevitably be told, fuck out of here. So let's see how this works. Caleb Williams goes number one, as expected, to the Chicago Bears, and Washington is now on the clock with the second overall pick. The only thing we're considering right now is Drake May and Jaden Daniels. And word coming from Indy, you're hearing conflicting reports. You're hearing from guys like J.P. Finley, Mitch Tischler, and a couple more national guys that Drake May is head and shoulders the QB2 of this draft. And then you hear Rich Eisen and other guys say that they Jaden Daniels is the clear QB2 of this draft. I'm going to go off gut and where I stand as of March 5th. It will probably flip-flop. It will probably change again. I think Washington's going to go with the size, intangible. The, the, Washington's going to go with the traits, age guy, and with the frame they know will last in this league. And they're going to go with the big boy out of UNC, Drake May, Mr. Copenhagen, winter green, long cut, tobacco chewer, Drake May, you are a Washington commander. You will be selected as my quarterback in today's mock. And let's take a look at how this board is shaking out because my plan, if I do not succeed at drafting Caleb Williams, is to pick twice in the first round. I, and it is looking beautiful for me. I'm looking Tyler Guyton and Troy Fountainew in the face. Troy Fountainew ran a sub 540, one of the fastest tackle times in the entire combine. We are going to try to go up with Tampa to get that 26 pick because I need me a dog ass book in left tackle. He has plenty enough arm length and athleticism to play tackle. I know they say he has the position flex, the position versatility to play tackle or guard, but we're drafting him to be our book in left tackle for the Washington Commanders considering we just moved we just moved on from our current number 1. So, for pick number 26, I'm going to offer from our first second cuz you know we got multiple seconds this year. I'm going to offer from two seconds and see if they take it. For 26, a second next year, our second this year to move back 10 spots so we can come up for Washington tackle Troy Fountainew. Come on now. Oh, it's been rejected. Ho, 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 ho. Nah, 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 nah. We, nah, we got to come a little bit more correct. Let me come a little bit more correct. Okay. I'm trying to be cute with it. I'm trying to not really give up shit. Let's see. 36. Second next year. Fifth next year. For 26. Come on, baby. It's just moving back 10 spots. Let's, let's do business. God damn it. They said they must got somebody in mind. They must have somebody in mind. Okay, let's try to trade with the Cardinals. The Cardinals already made a selection. They selected Marvin Harrison at like number four in the draft, I believe. They already made a selection in the first round. Maybe they will be more willing. We're going to make those calls. Lance Newmark and Adam Peters and Martin Mayhew are making all the calls right now. Let's call up the Arizona Cardinals because I want to tackle in the first round. I want to put two guys coming back to Ashburn on the jet. Night one of the car. I want to put an offensive tackle and a quarterback on the same five year rookie window together. That fifth year option is so important for a certain position and quarterback and tackle. It makes all the sense in the world. Let's try this one more time. 36, a second and a fifth next year for 27. It's nine spots. Arizona, y'all already made a pick. Y'all can use the additional picks next year. Come on. Reject it again. Okay. Let's get aggressive now. Let's get aggressive. Okay. Niggas is telling me you're not doing enough for me. You're not doing enough for me. Let's let's come correct in Arizona now, y'all. Okay. 36. Second next year. 103. 
God damn it. This is steep as shit, though. Ugh, I don't like it. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's move. We ball. We ball. Let's go for it. Damn, they're really not trying to let me get back in the first round. Okay, let's go to Buffalo. Let's slide down to Buffalo because Tampa and Arizona both said, fuck out of here, Rio. You are not getting at this spot. They really not trying to let me get my shit off right now. And I'm trying to get my shit off. I'm trying to leave with two premium picks, a quarterback and a tackle in round one. Let's shoot our shot to Buffalo. I don't think Detroit going to do business with us, man, because, you know, there's going to be some ill will on that side. We just took Lance Newmark from him, and we know how the Ben Johnson situation played out. Let's see what Buffalo talking about. Let's see what Buffalo's talking about. Two seconds. Let's call it 103 and a fourth next year for 28. Come on now. Come on. There we go, baby. We're in business. Let's go get us a goddamn tackle. I'm going to be sick if the tackles I want go off the board in the next two picks. I'm going to be so sick. Brian Thomas Jr. and Brian Murphy. Yay, we're lit. We're lit, baby. We are lit. No, we don't want to trade with any of y'all boys. We're going to go get our athletic ass tackle with a 9.3 relative athletic score from his measurables at the combine troy fountainew you are a washington commander we will not be on the board coming up at 36 with the trade we just made with buffalo but we're about to be on the board again at pick 40 and i told y'all there were two positions i loved coming out of this class i could double up at tackles here and take blake fisher another guy who absolutely destroyed it at the combine but Let's see what this list is looking like. I'm looking at Darius Robinson, Xavier Worthy with the worthy with the world class all time 40 yard dash record, the 421. Troy Franklin out of Oregon. Where do they have Xavier Leggett on this list? Because that is a guy I'm looking at with the Debo size profile, but actually ran a 439. Maybe we can get him at 67. Maybe Leggett is available for us at 67. Let's hit all again. I think Edge, we probably already signed a guy in free agency, but Edge is something I can't ignore here. And Darius Robinson is a freak. And we need somebody booking opposite whoever we sign in free agency. I'm not sure I could pass up this position of need with such a talent. Give me Darius Robinson, Missouri, to come rush the passer opposite Bryce Huff, opposite Jonathan Grenard, Josh Uche, or one of these edges we're going to get. Or maybe one of the big name guys doesn't get tagged and we end up signing him, but I don't expect that to play out. I think we're more so in the Dante Fowler Jr., Bryce Huff type situation when it comes to that pick we're coming up again in the third round at pick 67 i see the tight end that i love on the board right now jatavian sanders that is a guy that i covet we don't want to move back 14 spots leave me alone jeremiah trotter jr at linebacker as well is somebody i'm interested in um my guy leggett's off the board so he's not going to be an option for us anymore even though I was someone I was looking at a lot. Trey Benson, a running back, absolutely lit it up with Brian Robinson Jr. as the QB1. I know we want to pair him with a scat back, a speed back type of guy, but I think this may be a little early for Washington to take a running back, but we will take a tight end here because we know Washington's desperate need at the tight end position. Give me Jatavian Sanders, JT Sanders out of Texas. You are a Washington commander and you are probably most certainly going to come in day one and be our starting security blanket for Drake May in the 2024 commander's offense that is ran by trigger man Cliff Kingsbury. So we went with Drake May in round one. We traded back up to get a tackle Troy Fontenot. And with our one pick in the second round, we took Edge out of Mizzou, Darius Robinson. And the next round, we came right back and took tight end Jatavian Sanders. You know the draft is never going to go out. It's never going to go exactly according to mock drafts and how the consensus projections have it lined up. I'm not going in with the position in mind here. I'm just going to check the board and see what we like based on what is here right now. Linebacker Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky. Safety Jaden Hicks, that is the pick. I don't need to see any more. One of the best safeties in the draft. Let's look at him. 
The best prospect on the Cougars is Jaden Hicks. The third year safety is huge, measuring 6'3", 202. His first, field, his first on the field season included 76 tackles, one sack, one pick, six passes defended. It's hard to miss him. He's a plus athlete who closes very quickly on the ball in space and as a blitzer. His aggressiveness can be a it can be a negative at times in coverage, but he'll overcommit. He's instinctive. He finishes plays. He's more of a downhill player who is dangerous right now. And he will his value will rise significantly with more confidence and coverage. Man, cover, I'm I'm with it. That's probably the third best safety in the class after Cam Kitchens and Tyler Newman. Cam Kitchens ran a dirt ass 40 at the combine, by the way. After those two, Hicks is my next best safety in this class. Washington State safety, come on down. That's our second defender we've taken in the class right now. I like what we're doing right now. I know Washington has a laundry list of needs, but it's not as simple as just take whatever we need in every round. Washington has to take the best on their board when it's time to pick each round. Ricky Pearsall still being on the board intrigues me a lot, a whole lot. He'll probably be gone by the time I get back on the board. Ah, he's already gone, but let's see. Brendan Rice, the son of Jerry, like Brendan Rice. He's definitely someone I'm considering here. Zach Zinter, the guard out of Michigan, definitely somebody to be considered here. I trust that program right now. You know what? Let's take us a lineman. Let's take us another lineman to put next to. Let's take us another lineman to put next to Troy Fontenot on that left side and get the left side all tightened up. You know, to give me the big boy out of Michigan, pop him next to Troy Fontenot, and let's get it cracking, man. Left guard position was one of the biggest weaknesses on Washington's r- roster in 2023, but. I like what we're doing so far. I like how we're doing in this draft. Already got me a safety. Haven't taken a corner yet. Haven't taken an inside linebacker. But in this mock projection, I'm considering Washington spent some money at inside linebacker for maybe an Aziz Isle Shire, a Frankie Louvu, or someone of the sort. And I think that we'll have the linebacker position somewhat buttoned up before the draft comes out because it's a position Washington has ignored for years under Ron and Jack Del Rio. I don't think it's going to be the case with all the smart offense defensive minds we have here right now. I see another safety. I like Tyke Smith. Don't think I'm ready to double up at safety at this point of the draft. And we're at that point where I don't know too many of these guys, but I do know I was just talking about the linebacker position. I see a linebacker that I don't feel should still be here at 181 out of Ohio State. Tommy Eichenberg, come on down. You are a Washington commander. Washington has one more selection left. I forgot we definitely traded one of our mid-round picks, our fourth this year. So there was one less pick than I expected. But let's get it. I had to get a little bit aggressive to make sure we had one of those tackles in the first round. I stress the importance of getting a fifth year, a fifth year contract option with your left tackle and your quarterback. Two of the most three, two of the three most important positions in all of football. Washington went with them to start the draft. We went quarterback, left tackle, edge. Those are the three most important positions in the entire sport. And to end the draft, let's see what we're doing. It's a tackle, a corner, Dwight McGlothern. I don't even like that name. I won't draft him just because I don't like that name. Adrian Taylor Demerson out of Texas Tech. I like him. I like him as a safety prospect. Kamani Vidal out of Troy, the running back. Intriguing. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what we're doing here. We're not going back at safety. Kamani Vidal as a high relative athletic score. Don't know anything about the player. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I do. What are we doing with the final pick of this draft here? You know what? We're just going to throw another corner on the roster. Give me the guy from Louisville, Jarvis Brownlee. Let's get it. That completes Washington's draft. We're going to surmise and we're going to talk about this class in totality. This is what we came away from the 2024 NFL draft. Adam Feeder's first class as commander's GM. Dan Quinn's first class as the head coach of the commanders. We go with Drake May out of UNC at number two. We get aggressive, move up with the Buffalo Bills for tackle Troy Fontenot, who absolutely lit it the fuck up at the scouting combine the other day. Edge out of Mizzou, Darius Robinson at pick 40. We lost one of our seconds and we lost one of our, we lost one of our, 
fourth round picks, Jatavian Sanders, tight end, Jaden Hicks, safety, Zach Zinter, Tommy Eichenberg, and Jarvis Brownlee. I feel like it's balanced. I feel like we hit all the spots we needed to. And keep this in mind, Washington fans, we're not going to be able to check every box. We're not going to be able to fix every problem on this roster in one offseason. But I think with a class like this and some calculated aggression and free agency, Washington can get the ball rolling in a major way and start its process to compete very soon. Not to contend yet. First, we must be able to compete. And once we're able to compete with some st- sustainability, then we could talk about contention. But that is my scouting combine post scouting combine mock draft for the washington commanders let me know how you grade it in the comments and let me know what guys during the combine week impressed you the most that's all i got for right now hail to the washington commanders we're a week away from free agency and a month and some change away from the nfl draft shit is getting real in these nfl streets deuces